live from the westernunion.com VIP lounge. Welcome up, back. Guys? <laughs> Welcome to the internet. We're here in the <laughs> We're here in the westernunion.com VIP lounge with our uh, iHeartRadio on the verge artist. His name is Rabel. First name Steven. Steven? Yes. Hello. We adore you by the way. I Thank just you. could I adore listen you. to you perform all day. You have so much heart. Thank you have you. so much heart. Like I wanted to cry. Just I'm like, oh my god, he oh. is honest, and I can tell. Oh. <laughs> well, the thing was, well, they literally you. they released your video right before we came in here, <laughs> and I know. so we both watched it. Oh. And I left the studio. I'm like, I'm gonna be totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in there in a minute. He's super nice. But I was your hype man in the hallway. I'm like, you guys have to come see this guy. You're gonna want to say that you were here. So thank you for the honesty in the songs. We appreciate. Yeah, it. thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I know today is actually actually yesterday. This is a big time in Rabel's life, by the way. If you're just tuning in right now, first tour ever. First tour ever. Right, with Andy Grammer and Gavin DeGraw. Mm -hmm. Last night was your first show. Yes. Tonight you're going to be at the uh, Mountain Winery in Saratoga. Lots of wineries. Lots, oh, which is a great so hello. I it's mean, It's technically <laughs> the first morning after your first tour. Oh, uh, yeah. How are we feeling? That's true. I feel great. I mean, I'm glowing. chocolate croissants in the corner here. You got I had wine all tonight. the chocolate croissants. <laughs> like, there's some pastries. I was like, I'll eat all of them. Are you I capable did. of gaining weight? Because I, if <laughs> I had this kind of a tour, I'd be screwed. I think I'm gonna find out. Everyone's always like, you can eat anything and and be so skinny. And I was like, I thank you, I guess. But uh, then I'm like, I'm gonna be on a bus for seven weeks, mm. and I, I, yeah. I think I'm gonna get back, and people are gonna be doing that. Like mm. <laughs> <laughs> that look too. That yeah. same look. It's what, so hard when it's free, though. What did Kirstie it's Alley say like last week? What about losing weight? She said the hardest part about being famous is oh. all the free food they oh, throw yeah. at you. Well, I will say I've never had a rider before, like where you can write down like oh, yeah. I want this and this. And I went through it with my manager before we went on tour, and we we did cross out a few. She was like, mm, "Don't you, you can't." <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Tell me you like, wrote something cool down though, where everybody's gonna go, "What is this?" Not really, but I wrote one Snickers bar. Just on one. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. So as soon as I'm done. One per show. One per show. Okay. I love it. It's so comforting to me. Snickers and root beer are like so comforting to me. <laughs> but That's sometimes I'll place. go into the grocery store, like if I'm really sad or anxious or whatever, and I'll I'll eat a Snickers and drink a root beer and then go to the register and pay for it <laughs> you eat it well it's a it. very humbling moment That's like hilarious. the wrapper and then like the weird <laughs> half <laughs> full half empty depending on how i'm feeling right. can um <laughs> like root beer but again like, you're very sorry. honest you're still paying for it i'm not gonna steal it yeah. but now i don't have to because they're free okay. <laughs> someone else can pay for right? it just one a night, though. What's it like having boundaries? That's <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I actually have no idea. <laughs> if you've heard the music. That's my wife's move, by the way. She keeps one in her purse at all times. She calls it her emergency Snickers. And uh, right can I? It, why isn't she here? Yeah, I know. We get along. Like, I bought her two once. She goes, that's no, too many. No, it's too many. Leave one at home. Because you know what? You'll, you'll eat them. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember the last time I was in New York... I tweeted a picture of it. That's how I remember it because I can see it in my head because I was like, "This pic don't do this and then send. But I ate two king-size Snickers oh in my, my bed. Was it the end of days? It in was your bed? awful. <laughs> in my bed, I woke up with chalk, with not, with two king-size wrappers just as a reminder like, yep. That happened. Still it's here. real. <laughs> it was, I mean, it felt good while I did it. I know. It always does. Feel I understand. Right. Yes. You're an American. Halloween's coming yeah. up. Watch out. Do I'm you dress up? No, you know what I'm doing on Halloween? What? I'm getting four tattoos. Four? Why four? I don't know. It just felt right? It feels good. You have the designs ready and everything? I think so. Okay. Someone was like, what are you going to get? And I was like, let me check. And she was like, I'm really happy that you know what you're going to permanently put on your body. For <laughs> I started getting them and then I never stopped. So are you covered in tattoos? I've lost count. Really? My, or just my arm. How many do you think you have? 23 or 24 or 25. Wow. The last time I went home to visit my parents, they knew about like two of them. And then I texted them before I went home and was like in the, our family group chat and said, um, F I'll see you tomorrow. Love you so much. FYI, I have 23 or 24 or 25 tattoos and a pink phone case, but we're going to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. We can got you, through it. Can you show us the tattoo of the map to your ex's oh, house? Oh, yeah. That's right there. Where is it? There. You just got that, right? That's the map from his house. I got it the, house. the day. Well, the day the song. It's about the song, right? It's about the song. Mm -hmm. So I was in uh, New York, 
the day it came out. Uh, so Thursday night there, mm -hmm. it came out Friday. So Thursday night it went up on iTunes and all that stuff. And I was like, I, I've wanted to get the tattoo and I love tattoos and they all are like silly and whatever, but they all have some sort of meaning, even if it's a stupid meaning, mm -hmm. like it's still, it's not, it's not like everyone is like, this was that one night when like my whole life changed. Sometimes it's like, no, that I remember that memory with my friend or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so the song came out, went up on iTunes. I started freaking out. I started walking through New York, like kind of crying, listening to it. I called Alex Hope, the girl I wrote it with, who's like the sweetest. And then I was texting my manager, like, I kind of want to call Mr. iTunes and be like, can we shut this down? <laughs> like, there's a map. It's a literal map. It's we it's scary. You had a of. freak out. I had a freak out of like, if this actually goes, that's weird. <laughs> because it's too real? Because it's too real, kind of. Okay. Was it scary writing that song? Because it's so like, I, I felt myself in that song, if you've ever had a moment with an ex- or you want to follow them or just hang out with them all the time or what I, I had it a guy. It all sounds creepy, but it's not but it's because so everyone relatable. knows what you're talking about. They're like, it's a little stalkery. And I'm like, shut up. Yeah, it is. Everybody but like, does it. Everybody does that. The last guy I dated, he had a silver car. After we dated every car I looked at, I'm like, oh, there it is every again. Silver every silver car. car. I only saw silver cars. What a great name Mine for Mine doesn't have a car. Silver car? Every silver car. Huh? Mine that didn't, uh, didn't maybe, have a car. Maybe he has a car now. I don't know. I don't have a car. He don't have a car. You have a hit Nobody song though. Cars. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I watched the video this morning and about a quarter of the way through, I'm like, this guy, he's, he's talking about something that actually happened. And then all of a sudden I got really um, taken away by like that. I wanted to know where all the imagery was. I'm like, what's the significance of 159? What does apartment 159 mean? What's he drawing on the sidewalk? Why are there two women making out on the corner? Is that just to make me watch till the end? I don't know. I don't know, but it works. Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it, rewind. Snicker. <laughs> it was so awesome, but I got Root so, beer. I got ripped into it. I was in your life. Thank you. Well, that's, that's Isaac, the, the director was like so, we kind of went through treatment and treatment and treatment trying to figure out what it was going to be. Then mm -hmm. he had, and it kind of came down to like very simple kind of performance, not focusing on all the details of the story, but kind of like that, like yeah. just the emotion and just the emotion really. I mean, I just wanted to make sure that, that you, you felt a little bit of what I felt. Well, it worked and I have a hard, <laughs> hard heart. She'll tell you. <laughs> You have a heart? <laughs> I ha I'm, I'm PMSing. I have to say that. <laughs> so you're currently working on an album. This is what I think is awesome. Like, we're so lucky to talk to you right now because this is like the rawest of the raw moments of your life. Like, first tour, first show was last night, working on the album. You got the single out, and we're working on another one. The is th You were teasing during the performance, possibly Honest Man. Yeah, we okay. are like, it's all, everything in my life is up in the air yeah. right now. Um but you know, I got one foot on the ground <laughs> 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 and a great therapist. <laughs> yeah. So honest man, I love, I love that. That's so special to me. Um, and it's kind of a, a, a kind of, like I said, it's a little bit of like a heavier kind of darker side. Mm -hmm. Um, cause the record is stories. It's stories. Pretty much the whole thing is stories mm -hmm. and some little moments. My mom always tells me like, write a happy song, write a happy song, write a happy song. And I wrote 10 feet tall. I was like, I did. I wrote a happy song. And that was like the only thing that had ever come out for me. And she was right. like, and look what happened. And I was like, <laughs> oh, she's right. <laughs> but but I have a hard time. I told my my like snarky response was, I only write the truth. <laughs> oh, how did that make her feel? Not good. <laughs> she kind of did that. She kind of <laughs>, laughed. She's like, shut up. We love reading your tweets, by the way. Oh, no. No, they're the best. They're the <laughs> you're best. The only I, ones. I love them. I love them because it's just purely whatever's on your mind. And you did mention this was your very first tour. You love Gavin DeGraw. You love Andy Grammer. They're, they're great guys. They're so nice yeah i don't know like what is okay to say or whatever but like i know i know because like i'm in this little world now like i know you go into stuff and there's a level of like pr stuff like go say hi to like you know this or go say, like i know that that that's sure. a fact but like we got we pulled up in the bus and gavin's standing there and he's like hey nice to meet you like i'm such a fan and he knows like he's so nice mm -hmm. and then we went in the dressing room and andy came in and like kind of the, like it was just I was struck by how genuinely kind mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like supportive, like genuine, not like, oh, hey, cool, cool shirt. I don't know. 
Yeah. I think both of those guys have worked so hard to get where they are yeah. that they do what I like to term, they treat every day like it's their first day. Ah, uh, that's really nice. That's how I kind of look at it. That's yeah. how we, I kind of view this job. It's like every day is like my first day because we could be doing way worse. And, right. You know, and I know you've been around for a while. People don't realize it's like you're starting to kind of break now. Yeah. But uh, 2014 was when 10 Feet Tall came yeah. out. Yeah. Afro I've been Jack, really going for like nine years. Yeah, Afrojack put you in a remix that ended up on the Super Bowl and 100 million people saw it, right? How did that even take place? Your song comes out, you write it. How did he find you? I was asleep. <laughs> um, I was drunk. No, I, it was through, I was on Island Records mm -hmm. for three years and um, the story that I've heard was um, they were kind of going through songs uh, the, uh, the Island and Def Jam roster right. being like, what what would he like and who do you think he should work with? And they were like, you know what we should play him? Because he's very tall. He's like 6'9 or something, right? And they were like, we should play him 10 feet tall because he's like 10 feet tall. And then he heard it. And he told me, which I thought was really cool, w was that when he heard the song, like the piano, like 12 and a half minute long, like, right. you know, drawn out melodramatic thing that he heard it as the remix. Like he heard, mm. and then it was about just like make creating that. Sure. Which I thought was so cool. Cause I don't, I can do that with a song from nothing into a song. Like sometimes I'll be like, I kind of hear this thing and then trying to make it or trying to let it, whatever the weird thing is that happens when you write a song, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I, and I always feel like it'll never happen again once I do it. but. For him, I think that's so cool with a remixing, I think is such an interesting, because I'm not, I don't know how to do that. Right. I don't know how to work a computer. Mm -hmm. I can like, I think I have my iPhones probably, I don't even know how to use that. He probably hears 128 beats per minute on every <laughs> song, to be honest. That's funny. He's like, I can yeah, totally double much. beat like, this, no problem. <laughs> So the video itself has you on the piano in some rave and he's in the back with oh his arms God. up. Was that some sort of superimposition, or did it actually uh, happen? No, that, way? that was our first show. That we that was the first time that I met him, and it was the first time that we played the song live. And I had no idea. We You're were on the filming. piano in the front. He's on the DJ in the back. It was People at Amsterdam nuts. Dance ADE in Amsterdam, like this sold out arena, the biggest show I had. I was yeah. like thrown into the lion's den of like rave you know right. whatever and you're on a grand piano and i'm on like a red grand piano it was so cool that and people pimp. knew the song it was like a i was trying to was like a baller is this what it's gonna be like and they're like no i was like where's my snickers and they're like shut up <laughs> well, i'm a writer be sponsored by snickers i bet snickers hit me up <laughs> well no because then they're gonna try to send me more than one. Oh, that's right they have to follow the rule <laughs> we just did a story today the on rule air. of one the rule of one i'm gonna tweet that <laughs> <laughs> I'll know what it is. I'm going to retweet just it. Us. Just for us. That'll be our tweet. We did a, a thing on the air this morning you were going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a, a couple who won pizza for a year, one pizza a week, and they gave it away as charity. Oh. Uh, we were like, that's really nice, that's but nice. we don't know if we could do that, honestly. If, if you could give it away. Yeah. I love my pizza. I love pizza. What kind of pizza was that? I Whatever they wanted. Like just extra cheese. Oh, like the brand? I think it was like Little Caesars Little Caesars, yeah. I kind of like Little Caesars. Right. I know. <laughs> I know. We were also do talking. you know what's kind of good? Hmm. CC's. I, I don't know what that CC's. is. Yeah. We can get back to it or Those whatever you were talking about. It's probably more important. I just wanted to kind of whisper it. I realized <laughs> that I meant to kind of like. <laughs> and you forgot to pull I the mic away. I was like, <laughs> with I'm going to tell you a secret. <laughs> that was a very honest moment. CC's. Yesterday at Soundcheck, I was talking, wasn't talking trash. I try really hard not to do that. Um, Because I'm just really nice. Um, But I really, like, I try, I try to not. I know what that's like to hear that come back to you. Sure. And it's so hard to control. Once you say something, you don't know what, how it's going to be spun around, whatever. And so, but I was telling a story that was kind of revealing. And, um, and I'm saying, and the mics aren't on, but we're doing sound check. But I guess they're on for the people. Like the, the mics oh. are always on. They're always on. The <laughs> mics are always on, is what I'm <laughs> learning. And so I'm like telling this story, and we're all like kind of laughing or whatever. And then this one of the sound guys walks by, and he just walks by the stage and like, he goes, your mic's on. <laughs> keeps walking. I was like, thank you. If there's one nugget to take with you in show business, the it's mic is nugget. always on. And a chicken nugget. Uh, but only nugget. one per day. Only <laughs> one per day. So we were also talking this morning about how the fact that people who have anxiety attacks, or what we say, people that, are, people that are anxietous, oh. that's a word we made up on the show, um, it's actually, it, they're actually brilliant. 
You're actually brilliant. Thank you. It's actually a great <laughs> trait. So we decided that we are both brilliant <laughs> because you're a lot smarter because you think a lot deeper, you prepare a lot more, and you are ready for anything. Meaning you always think of the worst case scenario because mm -hmm. your brain goes to that you place. You never know so when the ninjas happen, are going to attack you. You're pleasantly you. surprised. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I think lot. we're brilliant. We're all just brilliant. We're not suffering from anxiety. We should write a book. I know. Called Anxietists. The Anxietist Thesis. Anxiety soup for the soul, huh? Yep. <laughs> Something like that? I don't know. CCs. <laughs> <laughs> Rabel, right. man, Anxiety thank you so much for joining us, dude. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get off that. I'm going <laughs> to no, have to come got, up with the book title. No, we love it. Tonight, okay, so tonight is your show at the Mountain Winery in Saratoga. Enjoy. Yes. Are you a, a wine guy? Yes, no? No. Okay, well, you'll enjoy the scenery. He's I a like, Pellegrino guy. I love it. Oh, that's right. Here, this is what I drink during pen? dry January, by the way, because it still feels a little bit festive. It feels to me like I kind of like it because it burns <laughs> your throat. Kind of. Like if I slam it. <laughs> I basically <laughs> treat it like this is an alcoholic beverage. Right. So it's always with me. <laughs> <laughs> it cuts your throat so you can feel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hashtag emo. Dark, dark thought, Marcus. Anxietists. <laughs> if you write a song called Anxietus, I... You guys got publishing. All right. Very good. For sure. But we love we'll you and we're proud of you. Thank you very much. excited for your tour This was so album. fun. Yes. I want to stay here all day. Just yes. We actually could. They've, they've waved us off like six times. Oh, my God. We it's not you. Talking. It's they I feel like this not. happens. I, do, I haven't done like very many radio visits, but it's my favorite because I, I love meeting Dude. people and like talking and like. You guys are so nice. I didn't even answer my questions. Like, <laughs> this is That's the, the best, best part. But you know what? Sometimes you don't need a question to get an answer. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Bye. No, literally. Rabel. <laughs> Do not miss 11 blocks, man. You're writing the stuff now. We appreciate it. We'll see you on the tour. Thank you for being honest. Thank you, Rabel. <laughs> the best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>